whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> I have my own I had my own stream open. Okay, okay. I was like, why am I hearing limitless feedback? Bow tie. There we go. And we should be clear for taking. Mirror match indeed, Tesla Trooper. We have got Starflash versus Apple Man. Starflash is in the orange here at the top, but it is a mirror match with Cadenza. We have a pinned comment in the chat to see her stats. In the bottom in the blue, is Hampleman. This is on this is on Rivendell, a very classic map in the Advanced Wars by Web community. One that Starflash does not like, but is is playing on this time. The last time we saw Starflash versus Profeta, and that was on Last Vigil, which is like Starflash's claim to fame kind of map. Where he, he pioneered an opening kind of shook the meta but on this map at least not to my knowledge uh starflash doesn't have any of those kind of claims so this might be more of a even field kind of game we shall see inkagark says it's the hq race map i mean hq races can definitely happen on this map there is a port placed <laughs> specifically to try and defend the HQ, I do believe. I think this is... This might be stream 200. I might have done 199 twice. In which case... My apologies. We'll have a different 200, I guess. But right now, both players are going for pretty similar approaches. Both uh, trying to get an early middle presence, although it looks like Starflash went faster into the middle than Profeta on the on their own HQ sides, respectively. And that's to try and stop any... Well, I guess in this case, it doesn't really work. Usually you do that so that you can interrupt one of the captures um, or get to a capture before it can be interrupted. But in this case, neither person gets there in a, in a timely manner that gives them that, that middle property in between <laughs> those two uh, capturing infantry in the, in the center. So that means that Starflash gave up some early game economy by going center fast, uh, center first, and didn't actually end up getting a property out of it, or a denial that wouldn't have been possible anyway. And that's I think because Profeta went straight over the mountain into the center on his airport side. <laughs> Starflash, quickly looking at the stats there. Unfortunately, this is going to be the zoom level that we're going to be stuck at because if they go and if they try and make it like the next level bigger, 
then the map is too too large for the screen and they would have to be scrolling all the time. So in order to see the entire map at all, all at once, they're stuck at this zoom level as as large as they can go, which is definitely uh, a little inconvenient. So it looks like Starflash is still going to try and get that contested city by just committing another infantry to it. And if we look, if you guys see, well, if you like open up the little link and see Cadenza's day to day, her initial strike, her first strike every turn is actually weaker than the, the default level strike. So a single infantry going for an interrupt is not going to be incredibly effective. So her her uh, Cadenza's day to day is going to actually be working against Ampleman here. We try to interrupt Starflash's capture. Okay, we have the first tank coming out from Starflash on the airport side. Ampleman getting the airport slower than Starflash, but Starflash also just committed the funds that would have been used towards building a copter to get that tank. So the faster airport's not really going to come into play very heavily for Starflash here. And right now, Hampleman's got a choice between uh, sending that middle infantry to get some captures or to go for a, a double strike on the capturing Starflash infantry. The double strike will definitely help out uh, because, yeah, you see, we have our minus 10% firepower here for the first strike, and then the next strike is just regular firepower, and then the third strike is slightly higher firepower, with the fourth strike being the highest of all, and then uh, it resets the loop. So, yeah, so if we look at this attack here, this is going to be just regular firepower, assuming Temple Man commits to it. There we go, at plus zero percent. But this follow-up one's going to be at plus 10 percent. Now that's not going to kill this infantry, and this does set up Star Flash to use that two health infantry to, to kind of waste that minus 10 percent attack that Cadenza has. Uh, in order to get stronger attacks with the full health infantry. Ooh, but that's not what we're going to see. Or maybe we will. <laughs> okay, the six health is going to go for the commitment here. You might just try and preserve the two health infantry for a turn where using it to, to uh, help cycle the damage matters more. I think, yeah, this still kills. That works out pretty well for Starflash, and now he has a plus 10 and then a plus 30. If he wants to use the 2. Although, if he wants to use the 2, he probably should have used it with a minus, minus 10%. Angry violin noises, exactly. Okay, Starflash is deciding how to how to parse this. Ooh, I don't like... I, mean, I guess that's okay. It does bring that guy down to 8. Ooh. Oh, I don't like that choice, though. I would have definitely have gone for the, the surefire kill. Leaving... As we, as we just saw with Starflash's 2 health inventory, uh, having those low health inventory letting you cycle through the different stages of damage at a low cost is pretty valuable for Cadenza. So deciding to let that that one uh, have an infantry survive there at one could come back to bite Starflash. We'll see what Hampleman decides though. Though at present it looks like Starflash is going to get that central city on the right side because Templeman can't actually get another infantry over there in time. 
Scarflash is the top, it's orange in the top. Ample Man is blue in the bottom. Okay, so I suspect we're going to see this one health infantry get tucked away. Like so, very nice. And then yeah, here we can see that the infantry doesn't quite make it there in time to interrupt that capture. So Starflash is going to get ahead in that respect, although in other parts of the map, uh, Hempelman is doing pretty, is, is ahead on, like on the right hand side, for instance, uh, in captures. But get, being ahead in contested properties can be often very good since the uh, like the right-hand side captures are kind of guaranteed. So you can get those later without having to fight your opponent. But these middle ones will uh, come up and to make economic swings when everything else has been captured and uh, someone is just left with more properties than the other. So it's a, an early investment for a stronger late game. Starflash diving on in here. If he doesn't have very many attacks to go for to cycle through these different damage portfolios, and it's very risky for him to commit the tank to hit the, uh, the city infantry, because there are other infantry over there. I mean, it wouldn't be so bad if it killed the 7 health infantry because then the full health infantry of Starflash could stand on the city and kill off the 1 health infantry of Appleman, and then there wouldn't be as much of a threat of infantry being around to smack into uh, the tank and give a really strong tank on tank firepower boost for, for our boy in blue. And that's why Starflash was checking to see that damage there. Of course, the, on this map, the comm tower is a really annoying to get to. It's behind the pipe seam, but usually you use a transport copter to get it. But because that's so annoying to get to, it's going to come into play later in the game, and that minus 10% to that Cadenza suffers on their first combat of the turn is going to matter that much more. Now, Starflash is pretty good with Cadenza. I think he said that he, uh, Cadenza is his favorite CO of, of the tier. So he's pretty well versed in sequencing all of these attacks. Make sure he gets the kind of power he wants when he wants it. So it, it's pretty worth Ampleman interrupting this capture on the left-hand side. It's a very nicely placed tank over there by Starflash can actually interrupt that center capture and overload this, this single tank that Ampleman has on this front. It doesn't want to go and interrupt this capture because then there's no way to counter on uh, in the center of this tank. But he should definitely send his infantry forward to interrupt this. It would be pretty, pretty nasty to let it go. Yeah, you can definitely just ignore the comm tower. That is something that you will often see done. Um, especially in the early game, but I would I would suggest getting it in the mid to, to mid, mid to late game. A transport copter on this map is pretty valuable anyway, and you could even use a uh, a black boat if you wanted to. Okay, almost all of the backwards cap uh, captures have happened here for both players. So pretty soon there's just going to be a huge wave of infantry heading into the middle as once everything's captured in the back they've got nothing else to do but start marching forward. It, 
can be a pretty well in the early game it'll be a very big investment but in the mid to late game um on this map the the 5k investment for a transport copter is not so bad especially because it can often turn into kind of an hq race and a transport copter can work very nicely in picking up infantry from that uh, airport base and flinging them up towards your opponent's hq so it's got multiple uses The annoying thing is that you kind of do, with, at least with the transport copter option, you do tend to just strand an infantry by the comm tower. You don't really want to like come back and pick it up. Often. I mean, it, it's definitely worth coming back and picking it up if you don't have anything better to do. Because otherwise you're just kind of down in infantry. So it looks like Ampleman does have a 30% firepower increase strike set up on Starflash's tank on the left hand side. Because he can attack, because Ampleman can attack the uh, infantry on the city on the right here with an infantry in the tank. And then he has a one health infantry, which will soon be a three health infantry and a tank on the left hand side. So he can set up four attacks. Maybe even more. What Starflash is considering here is that he can overload the Hampleman tank in the middle. If he attacks, he didn't do it in this case, then <laughs> I, I agree with not doing it. But he would overload the, the tank in the middle. It would have two different tanks it could attack. But there's, a, you know, it can only choose one target. Uh, but if Starflash did that, he would lose all of his vehicle presence on his right hand side. I think using a black boat to get the comm tower could be good. So we'll see if if Hampleman goes for this this 30% firepower attack. It's pretty good, but at the same time, it will give Starflash a retaliatory strike also being able to reach 30% firepower. And get a really, really good counter. Ooh, this is really dangerous for Hampleman. Because that tank is now in range of another infantry strike. Which means it can cycle through. Uh, the different damage levels. Ooh, I wouldn't do that. This is, yeah, this is over Parsec. So this is being played on my computer. Uh, with giving both players the mouse. Okay. Okay, so some some units are exposed, some units aren't quite so exposed. Um, Starflash certainly has some options in order to get some really strong attacks, and I think he's probably going to take them. But we'll see. He's got the infantry behind that tank there that can come down and hit the tank on the city. We can suck up the minus 10% firepower of the turn. And then he has three tanks that can attack. As well as another infantry. But he could pretty... Get some pretty nasty attacks, but at the same time, you would have to give up some captures to do so. Yeah, this is this is played on Commander Wars. 
rather than advanced words by web. Okay, Starflash is deciding not to go for any any funky tank attacks here. Try and stick to the more economic plays. How is the Rogger Parsecs was the program you used? Yeah, Parsecs is the program. Yeah. Uh, you can give remote access to your computer to other Okay. So what you saw there is Starflash just checking the range on all of those tanks so that he doesn't set himself up to get hit by two tanks. He's willing to get hit by one, provided it has to strike from some unfavorable terrain. And at the same time, he is threatening the captures by the HQ with those two tanks on the left-hand side. So right now, Starflash has a, a pretty sizable... Well, okay, he's, he's up by one problem, but uh, potentially a pretty sizable economic lead because he does own two contested properties and has tanks moving down towards the HQ area to try and deny more cities. So here we saw... Ampleman used the minus 10% firepower for that tank strike. So the next attack will be at just regular firepower. He could do that in a number of ways. Uh, he does have an infantry that could attack an infantry on the mountain on the right hand side to cycle through and get stronger tank strikes. So for instance, he could have done the infantry strike on the mountain, then gone for this, this attack here with plus 10, and then had his tank that was on the right hand side hit the... Uh, the right hand side tank app that Starflash has on the city at plus 30%. And although that tank would then repair, the uh, the backup units would look pretty nice for, for Profeta. It looks like Rafetta is going to prefer to just kind of keep units grouped together. Or not Profeta, my god. My gosh, Hampleman. Ooh. Putting an infantry next to a city like that is always inviting inviting a first strike, but I guess uh, the tank from Starflash wouldn't really want to dive in. Okay. Ooh, we have the first copter of the game. Neither player going for the comm tower right now. Okay. So do they... Cadenza having that damage cycling. Ooh, the five health inventory got its, got its capture. We've got a whole bunch of different options here for how Starflash might want to go about this turn, and that's why he's not automatically committing to any of these captures. You see, he might want to interrupt them in order to to cycle through that damage wheel rotation in order to get better tank on tank attacks. Although he only has two tanks that can attack Appleman's tanks right now. The five health and the full health in the woods on the left hand side. On the right hand side, Appleman has placed the infantry 
in his little wall, uh, as a nice little wall to protect his tank from getting first struck. Okay, so this is what Starflash is considering to use the minus 10% on. It's a pretty safe attack. Tank attacking an infantry on the city. There is a timer. It's at the bottom. I have the timer set at 5 minutes per turn because uh, the players have a fair bit of lag with their with the control. And there's 30, it's a 30 day limit. Max of five minutes per turn. And Starflash is not going to go for any of the damage cycling. Ooh. I would have thought that he would at least... At least use the tank on the left-hand side on the infantry on the city. To get past that 10 minus 10%. And then maybe the five health infantry on the... That central forward infantry for Hampleman. So he at least gets, so the Sarvash gets at least a plus 10% on the tank strike. And something to be noted is that uh, both of the players are actually get, get, getting to watch this, this, this exact uh, information. Rather than just seeing the the units moving, I, I probably would have used that attack first because I feel like that that firepower matters less. Um, but because this is being played remotely over parsecs, ooh, okay, we commit to gain the thirty percent to kill off the tank. Both players actually get to watch the other the other. Uh, player take their turn and see all of the things they're doing. We, we, we would not be able to play Fog like this. That would be a spicy attack. We'd definitely lose that tank. And Starflash doesn't want to lose that tank because then his anti-air on that side would be kind of stranded against tanks. I stole your joke. Hey, Emmy. Hi, Hajime. Hey, there's the minus 10% firepower. Used very nicely and got the kill. There's lots... There's lots of attacks available this turn. Ooh, we even got that kill too. So, uh, Hempelman can cycle can cycle through here at least twice, maybe even three times to get some favorable attacks. So he, should, he should save this five health tank to kill that off with a with a plus uh, plus zero or a uh, even a minus ten might kill it. And yeah, use your plus thirty. There we go on something that that matters. You can go for that one. He could also dive forward in the center and hit a tank. Because that would be overloading Starflash's tanks. We go for the infantry on infantry. Strike at the plus 30. So I wouldn't use that tank. But that's okay. Templeman can do what he wants. I would have used that tank to do it. Because 
the one that Hampleman used, just used, could have gone for a dive in and uh, hit one of Starflash's tanks in the back 40. Uh, which normally would be really painful, but if you're doing it with plus 30% firepower, I could see it being pretty nice just because it overloads the remaining of Starflash's tanks. Okay, we go for some infantry strikes. That was at plus zero. The next one's at plus ten. And then he might go for the tank on City. Looks like the tank's not going to strike the tank on the city. We're just going for a single infantry attack. Definitely a little spicy. forward with these infantry. There's a fair few attacks that Starflash can be taking on the right hand side here as this flips over to his turn and and still like two tank strikes at least on the left. So he's also going to get his fair share of cycles. Ooh, is he going in with that tank on an infantry? Just thinking about it. Okay. That's definitely a good choice for the minus 10% firepower. Since it's it's overkill even at that at that level. We're gonna do the regular firepower strike over here. And now the two positive ones, the plus 10% and then the plus 30%. Which I Assume Starflash is going to use in these tank strikes. He might even use two plus 30s on the two tank strikes on the left-hand side and just go through all of the rotations on the right-hand side conflicts. I'm glad you joined, Emmy. Thinking about it, I think I would I would save. I would use the plus ten on the left or on the right hand side. Use the thirty on the left, and then cycle through to another thirty on the left. But we'll see what Starflash decides. That's definitely something Starflash will be considering right now. Evelman has his tank on the right hand side really nicely guarded by the artillery, so I doubt. I'm not a huge fan of that choice. Uh, but uh, I doubt we'll see any tank engagement on the tank on tank on the right hand side here. There was lots of infantry attacks that could be done here, so I don't think Starflash needed to send that infantry in. tank first. That thing looks a little painful. Now Starflash is known for really fast play. So definitely kudos to Hampleman for getting Starflash to slow down and think through this turn. It's also part of just this commander. It ends up has a lot of that uh, sequencing going on and that takes a lot of planning. If this wasn't a live game, you could definitely spend <laughs> quite a bit of time from these players. Just move planning 
uh, each of these turns out to be exactly what they'd like. And this is still pretty much the mid game. The conflicts are still fairly manageable in size. Appleman is Apple Man. <laughs> okay, so that's uh, Starflash getting that infantry kill on the, the bottom left corner is pretty scary. Because now there isn't anything over there for Hampleman to actually defend that HQ if Starflash just kind of walks at it. And that would be part of the kind of HQ race quality of this map is that HQ can definitely have some vulnerabilities to just being raced once uh, engagements are taking place elsewhere. As we have a nice tank brawl happening in the center right. Okay, so Implement always has this copter strike on some infantry on the right hand side in order to start this off because that would be outside not there though well if he attacks I guess he wants to break through he's trying to go for the interrupt on the city maybe I must be missing why Hampleman care so much about that infantry on the forest but the the copter could have just attacked the capturing infantry and that would have been out of range of the anti-air out of range of the anti-air there's no increment you just get flat five minutes per turn uh, animations don't take up clock time though because you'll see you'll see the clock freeze when the uh animations move. Unless that one actually, the clock just froze, but it still took up the time. I'm not sure. Yeah, normally it would be four or three minutes per turn, but they are dealing with quite a bit of latency here. So we don't want to have them lose over that. Looks like Hippolyn is just going to try and go for the city in the center on the right hand side and then fall back towards the safety of the base on the left hand side. Now these bases are very, very vulnerable because they're, uh, well, specifically like Hampleman's base on the left hand side and Starflash is on the right. They're very vulnerable to being taken out because they're, they have a lot of heavy terrain around them. So it's very easy to just block lock them off so that they, they can't use their vehicles to get favorable attacks. So if Hampleman does fall back with these tanks to try and get the safety of the immediate reinforcements from the base, then uh, this does open up some possible shenanigans for Starflash should he pursue. So he, he would really like to have either a battle copter or an infantry around that could block the way. As long as it's just tanks, then it's not super great to dive in. But even sending a, a single tank forward and making it so like two or three tanks from him can't uh, get the attacks they'd like. So this can take a lot of a lot of planning to come up with a defense here. And so it's it's always a lot easier to uh, 
to find an attack, then find a defense. Is an attack just has to find one avenue through, but the defense has to stop every single one. If I had to predict who's going to use the normal power first or the super, I think it's probably going to be Star Flash. So Star Flash does have a play here, but I don't know if he has quite enough rotations to... What he wants to do is where... Where, uh, I can't use the mouse because, of course, the player's... So, where Hampleman's full health infantry is standing above the base, Starflash would like to have a tank there because Hampleman would only be able to attack with, uh, with one, one tank encounter. It's okay for, it's almost, well, it's not, it's almost okay for Starflash to just take up the forest and the shoal next to the infantry. But that would give Hempelman access to that three health tank to be used as a sacrifice to potentially break through um, and get more tank strikes for Hempelman. What Starflash really wants to do is just one-shot that infantry, but I don't think that's happening. So Starflash is the top cadenza, and Hempelman is the bottom cadenza. Now, if Starflash used the normal power, then he would be able to get the, the kill on that infantry. doesn't quite have it right now. He's around half a star, so around 4,000 or so uh, charge away from the power. Okay, we'll have cycle to the plus 30, which will let this anti-air get the kill on that infantry. Now this is definitely a dangerous move. The idea is that you can now hit the artillery from city and do some damage there but the dangerous thing here is this exposes the anti-air or star flash on the right hand side and there's two tanks and an artillery so the anti-air will die and that copter will be able to kind of reign supreme for a bit this is going to be so this looks pretty nice for Starflash. It's, it's showing like the single tile that Hempelman can attack from, but because of the three health tank, he can sacrifice through and actually get two really good tank attacks on his turn. And uh, you can see that Hempelman actually has the normal power now. So we're going to see some pretty juicy... Uh, Condense a normal power moves next turn. At least, I would definitely be using it. I think you can get... I think Campbellman can get four tank kills and an anti-air kill. Absolutely dominating the right-hand side and getting some pretty good damage on the left-hand side. If he could get the super, it would be even better. Oh, he's not. Oh, he's not going to sacrifice through. I would 100% have sacrificed through. Uh, when the... Uh, Normal power for Cadenza is active. Her damage rotation is much stronger. And it would be possible to one shot like that tank on the road that's next to a city, for instance, after breaking through the nine health tank on the on the shoal.
It looks like Hamplemint isn't looking at the normal power, which... Which I disagree with, but... I'm not the one playing, so that's okay. Very dangerous to fall back. Let that entrance get taken over by Star Flash here. Is it's it's so dense in terrain that Star Flash can just tactics all of these tanks out of the fight. Kind of like what just happened here, where they, they can't both get an attack in unless uh, the three health link got sacrificed. I would usually favor the normal power, but the super can definitely have some play. The fancy thing with the super is that uh, that third strike becomes an instant kill against units of lesser value, which means like copters one shot kill anti airs, for instance. And that value is determined not by like how much it costs to buy the unit, but how much that unit is worth. So if you're damaged, you're worth less. Like a full health tank with one shot a nine health tank. Like a stealth with one shot a neo tank, for instance. A huge fan of how this damage cycling has worked out. Uh, he can still get to plus 10% firepower with his tank on the anti air, which he kind of needs to do, otherwise, his copter is in some serious danger. He's gonna go for the plus zero. He has to go for a pretty unfavorable attack with his, his infantry to get to plus 10. Knocks it down to three. I guess he'll just go in with the plus 10 with the infantry. It's a much less valuable plus 10, as you can see. But it should at least knock the anti-air down to two. The anti-air have really high uh, damage for attacking battlecopters. So every point of damage matters. Okay, I would not be surprised to see... Uh, I don't think Starflash will do it. He could. He, well, if he gets his super, he can clear this base. Because he can... Oh, no, he can't. The 6 health tank's too healthy. He can almost do it. If, he, he, if the 6 health tank was a little bit lower health, he could have that sacrifice to the tank on the base and uh, then use the super to clear it. But that's not quite possible with a six health tank. Okay. So we might just see Starflash place a tank on the forest next to the base. You don't even attack from it, you just stand there. And you can see that that kind of shuts off four tanks from fighting, and if the tank on the base wants to attack, then no other tank can be built on that front. It's just uh, be standing on the base, of course. But this right-hand side right now for Star Flash definitely doesn't look too hot. Does get to hit this copter down to seven. Just lets him use the superpower. Oh, it's equal or less. Oh, I didn't. Even, I thought it was just less. It's equal or less. So this will just kill this and you get the base kill. He's gonna cycle through here, so this is plus 20, and then it's plus 40, 
and then it's the one shot. He should he should probably use the tank. Yeah, to hit the infantry base there. You go. And then he can take his one shot. Okay. He went for one shot over there. Fine, I guess. He's marching forward. HQ is under threat. And the base is taken out, so that HQ is going to die. Like three turns, they'll be captured. Unless Hempelman like builds a battleship to try and save it. We're gonna have to see what Starflash builds here. It has to be like a a medium tank or something to try and hold this. True, Hempelman can clear the base using the super. Just like Starflash did, and then build from it. So if Hampleman uses the super here, he can also go for those same one shots. Two of those tanks. And he just has to get enough attacks elsewhere to. The first attack, and he has to get two more. He does have a one health artillery that can attack. He's got a well health, one health infantry that can just kind of attack. And he does have his own transport copter built here, so he can start threatening to, to rush Starflash's HQ at the same time that Starflash is, is going for his own. think about this it's, it's kind of tricky because you don't want to wipe out all of the targets because you do need to have enough attacks available to you to get all the rotation all the rotations yeah we've got boosting I mean, the full health strike tank on the entire does make sense. Just thinking about it. Goes onto the forest. Strike there. Makes sense to me. If he kills that anti air, he can always block off the base with the copter. Uh, I believe Degis is returning next week. So we have our one shot right here. cycle through two steps and we got one more and then there's the instant kill to clear the base and that lets the entire live which is definitely the two but we'll repair to four i mean i think the copper can still block no 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 oh no, no that's fine that's right oh. I, I miscounted for a second there okay we got the instant kill uh clear the base and it will let Implement build there. The infantry will live this counterattack, which is nice. A little awkward to use this copter to kill a two health anti-air. I think the I think that copter 
Yeah, the copter's worth enough to, to one-shot that night health tank, although there isn't enough stuff over here in order. Okay. So they super cadenza it at each other there. Game info. Starflash is ahead by three cities right now. Oh, there's some very wacky COs. Interesting. So Starflash... Could have moved into range of the HQ, but just goes for the city right now. They'll definitely take some pressure off of Ampleman. Clear off that infantry. Takes a plus zero to go for this tank. And now he's got another, he's got a plus ten to finish it off. Ooh, but it lives at one thanks to the plus 10 plus 10 stats you get from having the superpower active and the fact that there's no comm tower at least not captured city's under pressure okay looks like we're just gonna go for Copter front switch immediately to face Templeman's own copters here. Fortunately for Star Flash, all of the tanks for Hempelman on that left hand side have been injured, so there's not any really aggressive walling that can be done to stop that anti air from getting involved. But at the same time, yeah, it's very important that Starflash sends these copters over there because Ampleman does still have that transport copter and two infantry over there to try and chase down that that HQ. It's very important that you don't get distracted about what's happening in the middle and then just lose the game. Let me just goes for some captures. These are both uncontestable, and which is very important because Emblem is behind an economy and about to lose a city of his own on the left hand side. Okay. And you can see the the tank sitting on the forest next to Hempelman's base. That is to lock the base in. You can attack it, but that means you're not building anything. So Starflash can't, or not, I mean, Hempelman can kill this tank and then block the anti-air with the two health tank or the infantry. Looks like we're gonna use the two health tank. And that will protect the copters. It looks like Hampelman's going to be building another infantry here. They can try to rush the HQ. Hampelman does have quite a few tanks back here, so Starflash probably wouldn't be able to get it. Hempelman has a serious threat on Starflash's HQ, but the reinforcing copters are going to help with that a lot. Okay, Hempelman has 19k in the bank, and all he has is an airport. So I imagine that he has that he can build from. Well, and a, and a harbor, I guess. Um, Hmm. Artillery being, being used to help protect the infantry that's going for the capture. That will definitely help with the economic situation. 
Artillery is trying to find a good place to stand. Looks like it, it can't find a, a nice safe spot, so instead it's just going to go stand on the city, which I do like. Oh, okay. So it could, it could have gone and stood on the city so that it'd still be involved. It'd just be overloading all of the, the tanks for Starflash. The so Heppelman ended up loading 10k. Really nice capture threats coming out from Starflash, though. Going after Hampleman's unguarded... Actually, that is, that is a guarded city. Hampleman does have a, a tank in range to defend in the center there. Down. Yeah, Hampleman might be thinking Battleship, but I don't think he needs one. So he might also be thinking just a heavy vehicle. Starflash maintaining that lock on that base. Pulls off the artillery. Rotates. Try and... Oh, he actually did enough damage. I think that was a high roll. He needed to knock it down to one specifically because it needs two to finish capturing the city. So really nicely done. You can use a battleship just to guard the HQ. I guess it also guards the base from being blocked like it is. But it's dangerous to go for it, because if your opponent just decides to hit everywhere else on the map instead of where the battleship is, it'll just kind of like get, get out econed. Okay. There's definitely some threats towards Starflash's HQ. But there's no anti-air for, for Hampleman on the right-hand side, so the copter should be able to, to stop any shenanigans. <laughs> the, the battleship... <laughs> Actually, the battleship does not have range on the, the pipe seam, unfortunately. Unless you were getting the, a battleship from the other, <laughs> other port. Oh no, I guess it can it can sail up a single tile. Yeah, no, it can it can clear the comm tower very expensively. Stealths are also allowed on this map. And sometimes they get bought. Okay. I mean Hampleman can interrupt that central City, but he did just move his tank off of his base, so I don't think he's going to I'm not a huge fan of where this... Literally ended up. I'd prefer if it was defending the copter. There. That's just a weird little rotation. If you're gonna do that, I would have just stayed on the base. But I think Hampleman just had a like a change of plan. Mid turn is what happened there. But that does mean that Hampleman isn't able to interrupt that central capture anymore. Definitely very painful. And I also thought that Hempelman might use the copter to go for a copter and copter attack with the plus 30% firepower. That does not seem to be in the cards. Was 
the base block worth it? I mean, you might as well go for that attack. I just would have done it with the tank that I already skin. Got the bomber. Or a fighter. Okay. So, the alarm bells for Starflash should be ringing. Fighters are very, very good when you're going for an HQ cap. Especially one at the top of the map. Because there's already very limited uh, tiles that you can actually defend your HQ from. And a fighter is a very hard to kill unit that can just stand in the way. Starflash has to be prepared for that. I mean, it's looking very evident about plans to, to dash towards the HQ here. Fighter worth it versus three copters. Well, a fighter versus just three copters isn't as good because an anti-air is... I mean, it doesn't one-shot a fighter. It's part of why a fighter is so good at going for HQ rushes. But it does hit fighters really hard. So it doesn't have that same... Quite that same situation. Starflash's copters are all connected, which is really good. Either on the tank or the anti-air. Or not the anti-air, the artillery. This will... Actually, I guess Helmet is still pretty far away from the, the, the power here. We'll see if Starflash starts saving some funds for a panic battleship. Or if he just builds like another anti-air might be a good choice. Because there's no healthy tanks to to help the infantry and copters. But yeah, there we go. The anti-air is gonna be used for protecting the HQ. I expect Hampleman to kill off that anti-air also and just be really brazen with this fighter. It's a weird place. I guess he's not playing to kill off the anti-air. Panic aircraft carrier, that would be that'd be something. That's definitely a good choice to use a minus 10% on. There's a lot of properties here <laughs> in the center that Appleman can try and take back, but I feel like this HQ push is pretty much the only the only chance at this point. There's a very large income uh, disparity. With Implement making 16k per turn and a Starflash making like 20k ish. I would use the plus 30% if you're going to, if the idea is to go for that, I would go for a plus 30%. The reason Hampleman wants to go for that attack is because he doesn't want his infantry there, the, the infantry in range of the HQ, to get hit at the top. And this is where I thought the fighter should have been further forward because this uh, anti air can get taken out, like so. The fighter could have been 
And if you see, if you see if it was even if it was just one tile farther, it would already be able to block uh, a side of the HQ. So very dicey to to bring those copters close like uh, uh, to that spot because now they're just sitting in between two of Star Flash's copters. Although Star Flash doesn't have a ton of places he can rack up uh, hits in order to rotate through the different levels of damage. So maybe he'd only get one 30% firepower strike, but still can hit them pretty hard. Kinda of feels like Campbellman was going for an HQ rush and hasn't really committed to it. So this is not great to move that tank forward because that isn't gonna get a ton done and it uh, opens up another target for Starflash to rotate through the damage cycles. The fight on the right hand side. And the infantry being bought on that base makes me think that Hampleman is going to try and get those captures, or I think going all in on the HQ is pretty much his best option. Yeah, Starflash is making 22k, so he's up 6k income right now. Trying to decide how he wants to go about this. He could use a normal power here if he wants to. It would be kind of dangerous because it does involve moving the copter away from the HQ. But it would let him get some really nice hits, for sure. Would I wait for the normal power? I would, or wait for the super. I'd probably use the normal power here. If I was playing as Star Flash. Because... It looks like there's at least four attacks that Starflash can get on the left-hand side, just slamming into that tank that moved forward. So we can get some nice rotations going. Like so. And with the normal power, you could get some uh, one shots on copter and copter fights. And be able to kill off both copters because the tank would also be able to. I mean, I guess you can still kill off both, both copters. Use the tank to kill the three health blocking tank. No normal power being used by Star Flash. And this doesn't mean that all of these units, except the three health tank that Star Flash came back, uh, are going to be living. Which is really annoying because they can, of course, be used in the rotation. But they also get to be used as blockers. And, uh,. Like clearers for you. But right now, Starflash can't 
stop the uh if he if both of the battle chapters were dead the star flash could just place his infantry in the way and the hq couldn't uh be a capture on the hq couldn't start now because Hevelman's fighter is a tur is, didn't go its full move up it can't just occupy one of those tiles next to the HQ. So at this point, Starflash can definitely save his HQ when the capture starts. I guess using Caden Cadenza Super, he would still be able to. Because he would just get the one shot on the capturing infantry. And he might end up saving his super for that. Because that means you only need one tile of access to the HQ rather than multiple. Which can be definitely life or death. They're anti air. Starflash does have 21k still in the bank. So it'll be very easy for him to float money if he wants to build a battleship. He didn't float enough money that time. Ampleman could definitely get an HQ cap. Yep. Things go his way. I don't think Starflash is going to make it easy. Anyway, oh. It's a very annoying situation here. <laughs> Decides to go after the four health infantry instead of the one health thing. Doesn't really matter. Ooh, that infantry went backwards. Okay. Quite a few infantry here for Hampleman. He's got those two. He's got one in the center that can start moving up. And he's also got a mech in the transport copter down there that can be brought up. As is, this HQ cap is very easy for Starflash to stop. You can just do some damage rotation to get the Copter plus Infantry Strike. One thing I would have liked to see Starflash do is get his Comm Tower. I think he has enough money that he can very easily build like a Transport Copter. Or even a black boat if you wanted to. Because that plus 10% firepower would be really nice. Right now, it does look mighty tough for Hampleman. I think he. I Pretty much has to kill off Starflash's copter at the bottom there, but he doesn't want to do that because that's in range of Starflash's anti-air. I don't know which day I would have captured the comm tower. I just would have done it earlier. I would have done it once the base had been pretty much neutralized on the left-hand side. So here, I probably would have had the mech. I, I wouldn't have liked the mech where it is right now. That's where I'd like the infantry to have been boosted to. Because the infantry is the unit that can join with the other infantry that are going for the HQ cap. And I'd either want the mech. Man, it, 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 you don't really want to place it in the woods, so I'd probably just keep it on the mountain where the infantry is. I would just have those two swell. Well. 
Because, like, right now the mech is somewhat protecting against the anti-air slash tank, but that's not really what you're trying to do here. You're trying to take the... Starflash, if he needed to, could join that one health tank with a full health tank and get enough money for a battleship. I don't think he needs to do that, but that's something he could do, and that would make Kepelman's choice to kill the four health infantry instead of the one health tank uh, really hurt. Although it looks like that four health infantry could have joined with us. The four health infantry could have joined with a uh, full health infantry. To get enough. Starflash got kicked. That's not good. Okay, got him back in. need to go for an attack to get enough firepower to guarantee the kill on that transport copter. Okay, that's the that's the old version of Star Flash No problems. Here's our surefire kill. Clear the HQ. I don't think the super was needed here, but it's still going to do plenty of damage. Death to the mech. At this point, Hapleman doesn't have very many engagements available for him to go for any fancy super kills. Like having a copter kill an anti-air and that kind of thing. You could do that once. Oh, he has, now he has a tank strike down here. Hampleman loaded a lot of money. I didn't even notice that. He got 38k in the bank? He's going for the GG. The, the super from Star Flash was enough. A very well played game. GG. We just give these guys their computers back. GG well played. You can see the funds graph here. Starflash ends up getting. Well, this is how much money they have, not their, not their income. So it's pretty even income wise, and then Starflash around turn 12 just gets a huge income lead. And that's uh pretty much exactly when he shut down the base of Templeman. So a great, a great attack there. Both players played very well. Wow, very close in unit count throughout the entire game. Same with player strength. Really, it was just income was the highest. And the other thing that's not being recorded here is charge-wise, Starflash had a very nice advantage. Which got him the double for supers. 
So very well played to both players. And that makes Starflash the official winner of the tournament of the Custom CO Wars, <laughs> Custom CO Commander Wars tournament. Congratulations to Starflash. But all of the top three players will get to submit uh, new CO, new custom COs of their own that will get added to the mod. So thank you to all of the participants. I guess that does mean there is actually a semi-final game that we'll we'll see if we can get that scheduled in some way between um, Cop by and Profeta. <laughs> GG. Good job, Starflash. I hope everyone enjoyed. And I'll see you guys next time. Oh, there's an apple for the end of the stream. Thank you for watching, everyone. It's Go Seven, King of the Penguins. Of all the penguins, he is king. It's Go Seven, King of the Penguins. Being king of the penguins, that's his thing.